U-boats depended primarily on visual acquisition of their targets. But they ride low on the water, and the lookout could not see vessels more than 8 kilometers away, about 5 miles. Near the coast, Allied ships traveled in relative narrow areas. A U-boat could wait, just beneath the waves in daylight, or float on the surface at night, and expect with some certainty that the target would steam within detection range. But away from the coast, U-boats had to patrol much larger areas, and this reduced the chances of detecting Allied ships. If the sea was calm, crews would climb on the watch periscope to gain some height. The German Navy asked Focke-Hengelis to build a rotor kite that a U-boat could tow aloft to search for targets. The rotor kite had to fly high enough to substantially boost the scouting range, yet remain small, easy to store, and mechanically simple to maintain and operate. Focke-Hengelis proposed a clever design. The FA-330 was fast to fabricate, easy to store on a U-boat, and weighted so little that four men could comfortably hoist the entire machine and assemble it on deck in less than five minutes. The FA-330 was towed in two tubes of less than four meters length, about 13 feet, built vertically into the U-boat's conning tower. One tube contained the blades and tail, and the other contained the fuselage. The FA-330 needed no engine, because the U-boat towed the rotor kite through the air. Like a gyroplane, the rotor kite flew by auto-rotation, meaning that the movement of relative wind through the rotors caused them to turn with sufficient speeds to generate lift. Rotation of the blades in preparation for flight could be done by hand. The three-blade rotor turned freely, but it was limited to 250 RPM. Normal flight RPM was about 200 at a standard stowing airspeed of 40 km per hour, about 25 miles per hour. A minimum speed of 27 km per hour, or 17 miles per hour, was required to maintain auto rotation. The FA-330 took off from a small platform attached to the aft railing of the U-boat's conning tower. A tow line extended from an electric twinch to a quick-release coupling on the FA-330. The rotor kite would rise to approximately 120 meters, 400 feet, above the surface. At this height, it could see much farther, about 45 kilometers, 25 nautical miles. The pilot used an interphone system that consisted of a telephone cable which paralleled the tow line. The FA-330 was stable enough that the pilot could release the stick for seconds at a time without a loss of control. If the U-boat came under attack and had to make a crash dive, the pilot could pull a quick-release lever above the seat and the tow line would separate from the rotor kite in addition to releasing the rotor hub from the mast. As the rotors departed up, they pulled the line out, which deployed a parachute. Once the parachute opened, the pilot then released his seat buckle, which allowed the remainder of the structure to fall away. By August 1942, focke Hengelis completed the first prototype. Deployment started at the beginning of 1943. At the time, only the Type 9 U-boat had sufficient speed to ensure the FA-330 remained airborne in low wind conditions. The U-boat service began committing its longest-range vessels, the Type 9 D-2, known as the Monsoon Boats, to operate with the FA-330 in the Indian Ocean, frequently operating out of bases borrowed from the Japanese, like uh, the one in Penang in Malaysia. The first operational deployment occurred in April 1943, aboard U-177, which managed to sink one vessel on August 5th with the aid of the FA-330. The FA-330 undoubtedly achieved its designed objectives. However, by the time the rotor kite entered service, the tide had turned against the U-boat service. The fact that this design was not used more extensively is more an acknowledgement of Allied air and naval supremacy over the sea lanes than any failure of the equipment to live up to its expectations. To know more about the importance of height, watch my video tutorial Minimize Visibility.